Hello folks, welcome to another date on the Journalist Hangout Show. I am Citizen Jones Usen. On the program this evening, House of Reps, Ministry of Labor on collision course over planned 774,000 jobs as minority caucus rejects slots, asks for more, and later on, tension in Kogi State as PDP and APC await Supreme Court judgment on governorship election there. I'm hanging out with Baba Jide Kolade Otitoju, uh, BKO. Jide, I greet you. Good evening to you. Good evening, citizen. Charles Ideho will join us via Skype. And so the team is ready. Ch Charles, how do you do? Good evening. How do you do, Jim? Thank you. Uh, glad to be here again, even though we're not seeing face to face, but. Uh, we are going to be doing the business together. Thank you for having me. Okay, the team is ready. I hope you are. Now, before we begin this evening's show, let's announce that next week, Monday and Tuesday, Journalist Hangout will focus on the killings in southern Kaduna, representatives of the Hausa Fulani and the Christian communities in the area, would have the opportunity to speak on the crisis and possible steps to enduring peace. Please join us for this one, Monday and Tuesday. Okay then, let's go straight to business. Of course, the 774,000 public jobs scheme uh, was going to generate a lot of squabble amongst parties and interests. The House of Reps is kicking already. Minority caucus leader Honorable Ndudi Elumelu in a statement described the allotment of 30,000 out of the 1,000 slots per local government as unfair. And of course, uh, uh, you're asking yourself, who are these jobs meant for? For the lawmakers or for the people who they represent? Well, he's asking for more. Are we missing anything here, GD? No, we are not missing anything, but everyone is uh, doing his best to to get a piece of the action you know you know the way these people are <laughs> this is um, in my view the biggest uh, job scheme that uh, has happened in this country in our history uh, in our history um, 1000 jobs per local government right. and we have 774 local government that's a lot 52 billion set aside for the scheme. When people hear of humongous sums of money set up for schemes, for projects, but it, it triggers their enthusiasm. You know, <laughs> it triggers their interest. And these politicians simply want to get a huge slice of the action. They do not want to be snookered in any way, whether by the supervising minister, which is uh, Kiyamo, or even the chairman of the um, 20 man uh, committees okay. that Kiyamo okay. has set up in the respective states. And of course, they've been quarreling, that's um, uh, Nasru Ladan Harugungu, who is the director general of the uh, NDE. National Directorate of uh, uh, National Employment. Employment, yeah. Yes. Now, they've been quarreling with um, Kiyamo, accusing him of not carrying them along in putting together the 20 man committees in the respective states. I want Kiyamo to work with the National Assembly. I want to see a National Assembly that is allowed to do its job of oversighting the executive. I think that from what we see and what has happened in the last few months especially, mm. the probe uh, of uh, NDDC, um, uh, the one that happened in the Labor Ministry involving Chris Ngige, I believe that the executive needs to be well oversighted, if that word exists. I do not it's want an English word, yeah. yes. I do not want a situation in which we simply have a national assembly that is a rubber stamp of the executive. Mm. But at the same time, the national assembly and the executive, we ha they, they, they do check and balances for for one another. Uh, but both groups must recognize 
there are limits within the constitution of our country. You don't have to go beyond your limit. You must not, in the course of oversighting the executive, now uh, be seen to be supervising the executive. Oh, yeah. If, if Th we try to do that, things. yes. If we try to do that, then it will bring problems. Mm. It will bring problems. And the executive also must be mindful that these guys are partners in the democratic uh, process. progress and process. Therefore, Kiyamo must tone down on the um, activist rhetorics <laughs> and <laughs> make up his mind to work with these uh, lawmakers within the ambit of our law. Mm. These are hard boned politicians. If you make up your mind that you are not going to yield any ground to them, then they are also going to make life difficult for you. But the interesting thing that we are even seeing is uh, this one now, this quarter now, is not even about Kiyamo. <laughs> Kiyamo is going about his work. But within themselves, within themselves, within the uh, House of Reps, yeah. there is already uh, some, uh, some form of uh, bad uh, blood. You, you know, I'm not getting they, enough. Why you, should you get more than me? You did, many times you are wondering what the, if the difference between the APC and the PDP is the same, if you understand my rhetoric. Mm. But then, this is a job for Nigerians. Yes. PDP or not, or, yes. if, or APC. You and know. it is the Nigerians that matter, the youth, young people, the youth. Yeah. Those are the people that the president envisioned this, uh, this, this Ta project. Ta targeting. For. Yes. Ta targeting you know? them, yeah. They are the people, young people who have interest in agriculture, who have interest in the environment, you know. So they are the people that we need to keep happy. They are the people, it's not just anybody that should come and benefit from this thing. We don't need all those hardcore politicians uh, yeah. to just simply come and it should be the right people. You get my, my, my yeah. language. It should be the right people, the people who need it the most, who, and who have passion. There are cynics who will tell you the, the phrase right people is relative. Yes, but mm -hmm. the truth is we want what is best for our nation. It shouldn't be simply something for those who cannot find something else to do. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Because they will not do it with passion. They will not give their all. So the right people, the politicians must, yes, they want to be in position to say, okay, from my local government, I ensured that so so number of people got these jobs. Yeah. But don't also forget that mm -hmm. the executive too, <laughs> the executive mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. also have their own people that they want to give uh, these jobs lost to. Mm. So there will be disagreement, but they have to find a way to come together and ensure that... Um, Gide, where interest is involved, it's a little difficult to foresee uh, an agreement. It's, it's, it's going to be tough, especially with these ones. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Charles, you know, we are told that experience comes from bad judgment and bad judgment from experience. So our collective <laughs> experience is telling us that 1,000 jobs, for instance, in your our environment, in your local government area, um, your rep is saying 30 slots too few. It, debatable. Well, yeah. Debatable. Uh, well, it, yeah, it's debatable. There's, uh, there, is, um, uh, there is a yes, there is a no. Okay? The yes, when you consider the area, the, the geographically speaking, um, you consider the number of people as uh, you said that uh, they are inadequate. Uh, when you consider the constituents within his constituency, that uh, that would be grossly inadequate. But that's where the argument starts, uh, by, my, by my own uh, reckoning. And there's, the other no is that um, it, it, this job is just for 774,000 out of about 200 million that we have in Nigeria. And then and we also look at the job. What is the lifespan of this job, Jones? It's um, just six months. Mm. And it's like a stopgap to a bigger thing to come. My quarrel with the reps uh, is that um, why, what, is, what, is, what is stopping any of them from initiating a, a certain, certain things to say, okay, the, the executive, this is what we have that we believe that you can give to our constituents. But it's like just waiting in the wings when the, when the executive now came up with, with, this, uh, with this job that is meant for unskilled 
unskilled personnel underline in that our midst. underlined on skill exactly unskilled personnel in our midst and then they are now scrambling for the job and what i think most of them want to do with it is to use it to feather their political nest I mean, what what do i mean you know a time is going to come where most of them are going to be campaigning for for, mm -hmm. for the, uh, the renewal of their mandate so it is going to say okay if you say okay i was able to give 300 jobs to people 300 may not seem uh, something but so grandiose to people are listening but if you say i was able to give about five thousand jobs to people people will say yes you have done well mm. but what i'm saying first that there is no need for it for them to all these squabbles you see is but it's, it's unnecessary what they need to use like what they said is that they can form a partnership uh, with the executive and see the modality jones when you look at the number 734 a job a thousand jobs 15 percent of it has been allotted or allocated whichever whichever one you you want to take to the reps, but that's, that amounts to 116,100 of such of the numbers already allocated to them. Then the, the 85 goes to, uh, you have the, the governors are there being represented. That's you it. have the uh, church and all that, and then the mosque group, and then the youth groups, and then market women and all that. So if we are going to look at a way this thing must work, I think they need to uh, shift their sword and see how this thing can go to these Nigerians who are looking for how the next meal will come uh, after it all is not a job. after all Charles, not a job for... sorry after all it, it will be to, to their eternal credit if 1000 people in your local government can get the job oh and it, oh, it, it, it is our rep who, who brought the job and so, so on. It's, it's not shared. i just want it to be shared glory not that one person will just okay uh, give me about five thousand but yeah. i think uh, 50 percent it's, it's fair enough a percentage to be allocated to them, knowing that the governors also have their own say there. That's you it. have the the children. So and what, what, what they are saying now that interest, interest groups are too. There. So what, yeah. what the, the, the revolution also be talking to his um, his uh, colleague is that okay? You yeah. know what? Let's just support the, the executive and make sure we, we when they're able to get this thing through, they is able to sail through. It will not be a some a kind of a template. Yeah. Uh, th 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 thank you, Charles. Th thank you, Charles. Gidi, but Nigeria, it, my country, your country, has this knack for making a mess of boiling a five-minute egg. Tell a Nigerian, boil the egg five minutes. After 30 minutes, the, the egg is still there, and the man will tell you, I just put them now. So take, take that picture to this scenario. Just, okay, get your share of the thing. Bring, bring them. Obviously, you know, the choices they are going to make will be another palaver. We are... We are, uh, we are the still, selection process. We are still squabbling over the process. And for these lawmakers, the process shouldn't even kick off now. Hmm. As far as they are concerned, no, it shouldn't kick off now. They want to be sure that it's kicking off on their terms. Mm -hmm. You know? That's and, another and, angle. And, you know, they got angry and they went to the president to say some of his ministers were disrespecting them. And, and the, that was what led the president to make that statement that, look, the National Assembly uh, members are partners in progress. Uh, the disrespect of the National Assembly will no longer be tolerated yeah. uh, by any minister or, or, or any member of the executive, will no longer be tolerated by, by, by the president. They got hungry because of the way Kayamo uh, spoke to them. They didn't really abuse them. But he was <laughs> quoting law and all that and <laughs> speaking like an activist. <laughs> but you are now a politician. You are in government. You can no longer speak you like, The adjustment is not like, an easy one. Like the Dejiade use of this <laughs> word. All, uh, all uh, uh, my friend uh, of Sahara reporters. Uh, 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 you know, you can no longer speak uh, like yeah. those people. Yeah. You, you, you must measure your words, you know, and uh, find the right words <laughs> in dealing with these people because they can actually make life difficult for you, frustrate your good yeah. intention. Yeah. And that's why I appeal to him that, look, these hard-boned politicians, there's a better way of dealing with them. Uh, because Kiamo has continued to say, look, I have the mandate of the president to proceed with, with the this, process. Yeah, yeah. You know, and... Those guys are saying, as far as we are concerned, the process has not kicked off, you know? So, if I don't think that Kiamo has done anything wrong by 
setting up in the states the committees, you know, that would um, oversee, oversee uh, recruitment yeah. into this uh, scheme. Yeah. And he also made the um, DG of uh, NDE the, the chairman, you know, but he is going to supervise the process and supervise the chairman as well. As far as those lawmakers are concerned, they almost should have nothing to do with it. There is no way he will agree with you that it should have nothing to do with but it. But the money mm -hmm. for this exercise is not coming from them. No. It is coming it's from the executive. Yeah. No, and but you know because they are the ones who appropriate money. Okay. Uh, so they have that power. And don't forget what they did to Aruma, Aruma Ete that time. Ah. When they refused to even release money to to SEC just as a way of punishing yeah, I, I her. I can't forget yes, that. Uh, as a way of punishing her yeah. for that uh, exchange of words uh, that thoroughly exposed some corrupt persons within the so-called Halo Chambers. They felt they needed to discipline her and they refused to appropriate money for okay. the ministry for, for SEC. Uh, so, uh, we, we, sorry, we, we have company, and uh, I hear we are joined by Ahmed uh, up north. Uh, I greet you. Okay, uh, good evening. Welcome. How are you? Okay, okay. Uh, let's uh, keep it. Let's keep it going. Um, Charles, let's get back to you and and. St you know, tear the bag, as they say. I'm looking at the picture. The reps, yes, members of the National Assembly have a say here. Jide is telling us about the stance of our brother Kayamo, but do you blame Kayamo? Well, I really wouldn't blame him. I think uh, when he was um, appointed, he has a job to do. Number one, he's been in the public domain for a long time. I don't also forget that uh, he was also on the other side of the divide, where he was also kicking these politicians <laughs> like uh, right, left, in, and center. In the teeth. Up. Kicking exactly them in the teeth. Or yeah. right. well, in the groin. In the groin, sir. What to teach them how to run, run, run government. But he is in there now, and he's, <laughs> he's also seeing exactly the frustration that most of the politicians and government appointees are facing. So you can see somebody who is eager to work, somebody who is eager to make a difference. He wants to bring the narrative of, of the activists into governor. But I think he's learning that it, they, they don't mix at all. They don't mix. So that's why you see him as, as always uh, seeming to be very angry. Uh, somebody who is the, who is said, who wants, who, wants, who wants to show that uh, he indeed can do it. But he, 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 needs to, he needs to relax. He needs to know now that uh, he has crossed the divide. He's not a politician. There's a language the politician speak. There's a way the politician, they, they run their own game. That's why it's called politics. This is not... It's not, it's not um, NBA, or it's not uh, when he was uh, in, in, you know, when he and the Fallon, all of them were all in, in the thick of things. So yeah. he needs to settle down, and they also the, learn. This is not, this is not a human rights issue. It's not, it's not, it's not human mm -hmm. rights because this it's is not politics. It's all about, about, <laughs> it's about not about activism about, either. About yeah, yeah. it's about yielding grounds. When yeah. you know that um, what you are stressing is not going to work, you, what you need to do is to beat a hasty retreat. Then you plan and. Even you can compromise. You can compromise on certain things you believe in. That's exactly the way politics is run. Yeah, yeah. If it begin, okay. if it continues to run this way, it might be run out of business. I mean, business. Uh, 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 okay. So no, speak. I, I get your. I, I get the yeah. figure of speech. Yeah, GD, in, in taking this home, therefore, um, one thousand jobs. I'm looking at my local government in Parinin, somewhere in Akwaibom. Um, my representative, sometimes you are asking, do you, the question is, do you know your rep when it comes to getting these people for this job? And the local government chairman is involved, the state government is involved, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, it's this committee set up by each state. There will still be Wahala somewhere. Yes, but um, if I know these politicians very well, the people who get this are people who are connected to them. Hide that the people they use as foot soldiers during the elections because you, you have youth groups yeah. even within each yeah. of the political parties and they are the ones who help you to mobilize who go out on election they help you to get other voters out who um, put in a word for you so that you can get no votes on election day so each politician who is organized 
has cadres, you know, mm. that he uses for every election. So in the various wards, he has people, he has his agents, he has his representatives there, he has his foot soldiers. So he's going to look in the direction of those people for, um, for people that can be brought into uh, this scheme. Because even after now, he wants to be able to show those people that look, I've been, I've been good to you, therefore mm. you need to remain loyal. Mm. And for those ones too, to be able to say, yes, I have not served this person in vain. He has shown me that when there's an opp opportunity, he will. he will remember me. Yeah. So yeah. this is the way politicians make themselves stronger, make themselves more influential. And you can see that that's the way all of them are. Look, everyone wants to be influential within this constituency. And this is an opportunity. You know, there are some of these uh, lawmakers that there are up to, uh, senators, for example, there are up to 10 local governments mm. under them. Oh, so yeah. they're yeah. already imagining... No, no, it, uh, sorry, look at Bielsa, for instance. Mm, there are just eight local governments. Yeah, I know. Yes. So but within it's the a eight local... Yes, it's a, it's a small state. Uh, in terms of the population, is the smallest in Nigeria. But in, in, in terms of land mass, it is still bigger than Lagos. Mm. So, but they know that within even that small space, they have to keep the people work for them happy. So these are the people that they will <coughs> go and get. It's, it's just as simple as that. Yeah. I, it, it, a, a lot of the people who have no relationship with politicians will find it difficult to get into this thing. Well, okay, as we bury the subject matter, we, we can only appeal passionately to the National Assembly members, um, the officials of government, and of course, uh, 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 big men and women at the state level, let this scheme be. Please let it be. Please. Okay then, still to come, tension in Kogi State as PDP and APC await Supreme Court judgment on governorship election. Please stay. Okay then, welcome back. Now, let's identify with the people of Kukawa in Borno State. And this is having to do with the recent attack by the Boko Haram insurgents. The people had just returned uh, from internally displaced persons camps, IDPs, to Kukawa before the horrific attack. According to an AFP report confirmed by residents of the area, the attack occurred barely two weeks after the people returned to their ancestral home. Meanwhile, Babajide warned in our discussion on Wednesday, Wednesday it was still unsafe to return the people home. Uh, let's go back there. Let's go back there. Critically, you know, I said something a few weeks back when the army had the uh, altercation with the governor. I said we had to be careful about relocating people to their communities. We had to be careful. Boko Haram, after the governor met with uh, the army, they relocated people to uh, Kukawa. And Boko Haram went there this week mm. and attacked the army at that uh, uh, Kukawa. People had not lived in that place for almost two years. They had taken to their hills. They just brought them back, only for Boko Haram to go back there to attack the army loot weapons, and now the people have fled the place again. It's the same thing that happened in Guzamala local government. Today, Guzamala local government, there is not a single soul living in Guzamala local government. Soldiers are not there, civilians are not there, because the people returned too early. And the people around went there, destroyed the, uh, uh, the guest house that government has built, destroyed schools, and hospitals, mm. and then the people took to their heels to convince them now. That's the local government of the Speaker of Borno State House of Assembly. To convince those people to return now is difficult because they, they think that if they try it, these guys will come and kill them. That is the extent of insecurity in Borno State. It's only nat natural, Jide, here to ask if anything has changed as we sit here. I, Since know, the, the report. I, I warned the governor, I said, it is not everywhere that you can go to. Mm. 
It is not everywhere. Risky. No, no, no. You, you can't go everywhere. This is a fact. And I remember even the former governor being told by the army not to go and campaign in the local government. And he went, and his convoy was attacked, and people were killed. Some were taken away. Hmm. So this is the situation. I feel for the soldiers who paid with their lives. Because, look, when it is Bono Not, it's an, it's, Bono Not is so huge, extremely difficult to police. So you can't, uh, uh, be blaming, you can't blame the army if an attack happens somewhere. The army is already spread thin. We don't, we don't have enough troops to totally police that whole area. Okay. So I guess what the army is doing is, given the number of troops we have, there are areas we can safely protect. Mm. Let's keep those areas. And the people themselves know that there are places that they cannot stay in. That's why you look at uh, uh, Abadam local government, for example. <coughs> there are soldiers in Malamfaturi, but nobody lives there. Just soldiers. And every okay. other town in Malamfaturi, nobody lives there. They are in Niger Republic. A lot of them are hiding in Niger Republic. So this is the thing. And that was why I cautioned. Because before that last uh, incident, when the governor's uh, convoy was disrupted, there had been an attack mm. that, that people did not know about. So I told my friends, I said, it is not entirely true that that place is safe for people to come back to. And of course, Kukawa is not far from the area. We've yeah. seen what happened yeah. now. Because what? that is an area where they, are, they, they have considerable presence and where they have shown over time that they are strong. So if you want to uh, uh, establish presence in some areas in that place, yeah. they are going to try to resist you. All right. So that's uh, what we have uh, seen. All right, you did, but, but you know, the, the wise counsel is, as they say, the, the best uh, uh, discretion is better part, part of valor. Yes. Uh, we, uh, our leaders are... Policymakers must be discretionary, and, and, and we can't keep. We, uh, we can't be saying that oh, everywhere is safe. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Okay. Not everywhere is safe. Some places are safe. Some places are not safe. And that this is so dispiriting. I know. In, in, I know that so the the people know better now. Mm. What if we just? I mean, you can imagine the trauma. You've lived for over a year in the IDP camp. You you just came back, and these guys. Uh, return. This, this, this is so dispiriting, especially in a supposed uh, peacetime. All right, then, let's uh, move you now, in the mind's eyes, to Kogi State. You know, the major trouble with our elections is when campaigns become too expensive, and therefore the rich and mighty contest and are declared winner. Our peculiar electoral process offers no sanity for election out outcomes. The courts are forced to arbitrate. The election of incumbent Kogi governor Yaya Bello hangs in the balance as the Supreme Court is to deliver its verdict on the appeal filed by the opposition PDP. In Nigeria, experience is telling us that elections do not follow the trade winds of popularity. Charles Ideho, you can't say that. Your state is warming up for September. Um, this is an election we are talking about, Kogi, where the elections had already taken place. Sanctity and of election. Okay, sanctity of elections yes. remain a lot to be desired in our country. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, it, it will take it on them, Jones. Um, the Kogi State, as you know, geographically speaking, they're also our neighbors. Okay? And then uh, when you look at uh, what is going to happen at the Supreme Court, you also, if you, re if you recall that uh, in 2016, uh, around at this September 20, if I, if I may recall, um, this is going to be a replay of that day. That date was the day that the Supreme Court also sat in judgment to also uh, look into the case of PDP versus APC in Gogi State regarding even this issue of uh, the governor of the state, uh, uh, Yaya Bello. But incidentally, he, he was declared winner at the end of the day after a long drawn case between him and uh, Fale K, if you recall. So what is, what is happening now is, as I said, a replay of that, uh, of that uh, what happened there. But um, uh, hello, Jones? Go on, go on. Okay, no. So I, I think uh, the case in point is I, um, I, I wish that uh, the issue of, uh, like Bavajida and I spoke earlier, the issue of the forensic examination of the votes should even take precedence. Because 
when, for instance, if uh, a Babaji Day, Kola Day, Jodu and I were in contest, for instance, then he, I scored 20,000 votes, he scores about 15,000 votes. Then we look at it and say, the issue of invalid votes, I mean, please underline that, invalid votes. Mm. The invalid votes should be something that we have to consider. Some of us who study the English language, Jones, we have a synonym for invalid, which is valueless. Mm. Okay? So if you look at these votes that have no value, all you need to do is that you can't devote with value and remove those without value, then you now come up with the figure of the valued vote and you cannot declare your winner. Rather than say, for instance, when they say, okay, they are going to be, if, for instance, the pendulum swings to the, uh, to the side of let's go and recontest, what it means is that somebody somewhere has aided and abetted his political, uh, a political victory. They say, okay, go, you've seen before, but go, don't sit, don't sit again, start all over again. And as I say, for me, for me, I, I think that's uh, judicially speaking, it's going to be a, a, a travesty of 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 of, of, uh, of uh, incalculable proportion. So what we need to do is that I think the the forensic examination that we carried out on those invalid votes should be something that should carry the day, so that in the course of time it will serve as a deterrent to people who want to always help themselves to you know use all all means all means improper to 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 clean victory. So that when they do that, and there will be a, a deterrent, there will be a precedent set that you cannot do business of election the way you want it. Mm. Because when you look at the, inv the invalid votes, they remove it, and then you now count the one that has value, then you cannot declare the winners. So, but if we were okay because of this one, let's go, about, let's go again to go and recontest. I think, for me, that would be, in jurisprudence, something we, can't, we should not applaud. So I think what we need to look at is that as they are deciding their cases, I'm just trying to look into their minds now. Mm. We, what should play, what should play, what should play a key role there is the issue of invalid votes. Let's see if we can sip out the invalid vote that had no value and then have a reckoning with uh, the votes with Charles, value. Charles, let's allow the yes. apex apex court to do its job. Uh, we can okay. only uh, we can only come back and uh, belch yes. and uh, continue yes. from there. Jidi boy, it's also very, uh, another another dispiriting thing. Every four years, we go through this cycle of hope and disillusionment. After elections, you can't sleep well. You can't sleep pretty. You see, um, I want to see a situation in which the courts have little or nothing to do yeah. with our elections. But that won't happen if the politicians do not change their ways. Politicians must show greater commitment to free, fair, and credible elections. Politicians must stop the habit of engaging young people, arming them with guns to be terrorizing uh, voters on election day. Politicians should stop the habit of, the habit that is synonymous with bad losers. Because mm. sometimes too, a politician gets beaten in the right way and he still thinks he has to go to court mm. because he has money to give uh, lawyers and probably judges. I want a situation in which there has been an election today and we are certain, we are certain that only the person who deserves to win will win. But if we do not get to that point, then... It is only the courts that will be determining who indeed deserve to win an election. So the power is gradually being taken away from the voter, you know, and being transferred to the courts. My friend Martin Soloja has been saying this, that look, mm -hmm. this shouldn't be happening. But this is what we are seeing. And I don't know anywhere else in the world where it happens in this way, that you, you, elections are held... But we are not sure we'll be involved in litigation for months and months and months, and then we'll have our hearts in our mouth until a mm -hmm. court uh, makes its pronouncement about who indeed had won. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can see, like today now, even the governor of, of Kogi State will still feel that there is a burden hung on his back because this matter has not been dispensed with. 
It is when this matter has been dispensed with that you will now feel, yes, there's a huge burden that I've been relieved of. And then he can focus on the, the, on delivering the dividends of democracy, you know, uh, that the people uh, mandated him to, to give. But we also must bear in mind that you cannot vouch for the fidelity of our elections. Mm. For example, why is there any need for a forensic audit? Yeah. Because the PDP asks for forensic, uh, I mean, forensic examination of ballots. Because our elections are usually characterized by thumb print, massive thumb printing, uh, vote rigging, and all that. That's why they ask for forensic examination. Yeah, okay. okay. And then they got a prof, an expert, a prof to do it. Forensic the expert, court, The yeah. court gave them the go-ahead. The tribunal gave them the go-ahead. But by the time the judgment, by the time the, the judges looked at um, the evidence before them, only one of those, I'm talking about the lower tribunal now, only one of those three judges actually um, gave any form of regard to the forensic okay. examination. The two judges, in giving their, um, their majority judgment, did not even give any credence to mm. the forensic examination. And their own argument is that, look, we can win this battle if... It either if the Supreme Court, for example, takes a look at the minority judgment at the lower tribunal. Yeah. But okay. we must bear in okay. mind that at the, app uh, the appeal uh, court, that uh, the governor won hands down uh, majority, yeah. I mean, uh, overwhelming, uh, yeah. what's it called? Uh, unanimous decision. Uh, decision. That was yeah. what he got. Yeah. So, and don't also forget in the same election, in the same, uh, already, the Dino Melaye too had lost. Hmm. So when we are talking about tension in Kogi, people will readily say, oh, it is the PDP people who are under some form Sorry. of tension. Somebody wants to raise issues or join them. Uh, we have Ajose in Lagos. Ajose, I hope you are there. Good evening. Yes, uh, saying, I greet you. Detail. Good evening. I salute you and uh, yeah. Charles. Great job. Uh, mm. Quick one. Can you hear me? You are on, yes. sir. Great. Quick one. As far as the 77,000 jobs are concerned, it's dead on arrival. Oh, Government on. has no business in business. And we are fond of always setting up committees for virtually everything. What happened to NDE? Why is it Ministry of Labor to start with? Don't they have personnel? Is it lack of capacity, competence, or what are we saying? Now, to the East Orangeci team, detail, the yeah. fact remains we lack the capacity to confront insurgency as we speak now. It's not just about the shifts. Leadership is one thing, no doubt. You can't give what you don't have. Presently, the armed forces lack the capacity. Strategy is a different thing. Leadership is a different thing. Now they are not well equipped. Poros borders and all that. Take it or leave it, BKO. Right. Now to the issue of COVID, I can tell you for sure, as, as far as the, 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 uh, the electorates are concerned, the mandate will continue heading all the way to Supreme Court until we get the timing of dispensation of justice right. Swarmly yeah. nobody until you dispense with, with anything that has that, to that do sounds, with sounds, that particular sounds, electoral uh, uh, stop. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just say I thank you very kindly. Ch Charles, let's uh, follow the thread. We can save the Supreme Court or any court for that matter. This trouble of uh, get seeking redress there. Now, politicians have a choice here to make this thing work or not. Otherwise, what's the, what's the big, big business? Let's uh, even rub this in because it's relevant. The NBA, those who stand for politicians in courts, had their own election. It was flawed. And yet we were told it was an E election, Charles. Yeah. Well, uh, Major, let, me, let, me, let me attempt to shock you with uh, what I saw in Benin City uh, while I was there a couple of weeks back. I'm not going to mention any, any play, but I guess this uh, agency that uh, was going to conduct election for cooperatives 
corporate like uh, maybe TVC uh, corporate, you want to present, I mean, you want to conduct an election for. Babajide is buying as the president of the cooperative. You have Joe Suse as the secretary, and perhaps you have a uh, Festus as uh, the lecturer. Do you, I mean, uh, the treasurer? Do you know even that 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 uh, cooperative with Joe's, as I as I saw, mm -hmm. they, there was massive massive compromise. They were spending. I understand that somebody spent a hundred and seventy thousand naira at the first system before the head of that region now called 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 mm -hmm. it called it to a halt. The question is that uh. if you are if you if you are heading, you want to be a president of a cooperative Jones, and you are spending money to get vote. Then we are not talking about uh, the larger picture of uh, somebody who is going to be the president, who is going to be the be all and end all of all Nigeria, over two hundred million people. So the stakes are very high, and what you once you get in there, Jones, you are done with poverty forever. I mean, do you know how it is? So I want to get that Jenny said earlier. They, they, they have so much power, they have so much power to muzzle. So that's why each of them want to get there. And even when I also, some of us who, who report uh, politics and all that, I understand there's what they call the, the, the pretenders and the, and the contenders in politics. So you know the contenders, so the pretenders are always the ones who will not give. If any election, most of them, they know they won't win the election. Mm -hmm. But after the day has come, rather than be sportsman, sportsmanly and then to congratulate the person so that the state or whoever can move forward, what they do, what did they do? Mm. They go to court to go and seek redress. That is why we're having all this one. I think we need to be, we need to, we need to let them know that this country belongs to all of us. For instance, in my state now, everyone, whether it's uh, Shomole, whether it's uh, Obaseki, whether it's uh, is a Yamu, all of them are uh, Edo. If is a Yamu comes, uh, 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 assuming he wins, it's for Edo people. If it's uh, Obaseki or all the other people, if, but they will not allow that to happen. Everyone will be saying, I am the best. Even those who, as I said, pretenders, pretenders will always say they have a stake in it. Whether they win or not, they must make sure they, their voice is said. Of course, which yeah. is democracy, but I think we have come to a point where we begin to look at it and say, what do we really want? We, do we want a country yeah. that will make progress? What, that's what, a, that's what, a what, what, Charles, what they are telling me in, 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 in summary is many, most of our politicians are illiterate. They don't read. GD, they don't read. I, I talk <coughs> about the 48 laws of power. Very relevant here. Number one, law number one, don't outshine number one. Number three, don't show your hand too early. But this is always there. But apart from that, Jide, if a criminal becomes elected in our country, it is the system. If the system cannot, it, it, it is the fault of the people. If the system cannot checkmate this, it is also the fault of the people. It's not, it's not fair to simply say oh, it's the fault of the people. The Nigerian people want free and fair election. And I've, I've demonstrated here that, look, we can have free and fair elections if, if our governments are truly committed to it. And if, if they, they want it. Yes, if they have the fear of God and they are committed to it. Now, look at China. I mean, I said China, India. India is the world's largest democracy. If they do an election, it's inconceivable that you will rig. Yeah. You are not yeah. just you are not going to be able to rig. How are they able to do it? I don't hear about rigging in South Africa. And I've given examples even when the ANC, ANC went into elections in Nelson, municipal elections in Nelson Mandela Bay, where some of the greatest heroes of the apartheid struggle mm. grew up from, where they came out from. And they were defeated. By smaller parties, they still didn't think no, it no, was necessary no, to no qualms. No, no. Qualms. nobody went no. to court. They've got past that level. That is the level that we should aspire to be. It, it, it makes no sense for us to be this barbaric that we think we must rig every election. I had a reason for saying so it is it the is people. Not, did no. they, you talked about let the people, the politicians use boys. Let this these government, boys, let me tell you, yeah. if you have a government that says, okay, no more. No more. These are the steps that I'm going to put in place. And this is the technology that we are going to use that is foolproof. For example, the, electro, electro, uh, the, the Indians use electronic uh, technology. If we borrow the idea of the Indians, for example, if we borrow the idea of the Indians and then we use their equipment, then we can be sure that our elections will get better. But we must get to that level. 
What is the point in having, after every election, we want to get a, a, a expert to go and do forensic examination of ballots? And when they are, when ballots are examined, you will see evidence of massive thumbprinting. Yeah. You yeah. see evidence of vote rigging. You see evidence of rigging. It is barbaric. We have to stop. All right. Nobody yeah. knows um, how the judges will decide. They are the ones who have the evidence before them, and it is within their power to decide what they want to do in Kogi or anywhere else where elections have, I mean, where they still have these cases. Yeah, yeah. But for them, for the PDP, for example, they are saying, no, it was the courts that allowed us, that gave us the order to get forensic expert. Therefore, the expert, I mean, the evidence of the expert must be considered. Mm -hmm. The argument is that if it's considered, then if invalid votes are taken uh, out of valid votes, they will win the election by... by 18,000 votes is for the courts to, to determine. Decide. Yeah. For now, both the uh, lower tribunal and the appeal court have not been, uh, were not convinced that the evidence provided by the PDP in Kogi State Would was enough, enough yeah. to uh, 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 give uh, someone else the mandate. That, that's it. That's now, a word of that thing, people don't want to see the minority judgment was asking for a fresh election. I don't think people want to see a fresh election oh, yeah. because, I mean, a fresh election again? So it's up to the Supreme Court to determine whether it wants to um, uh, adopt the minority report. Mm -hmm. We've seen that happen in the past. Or stay with the, I mean, the minority judgment or stay with the judgment as handed down by I the did, lower I, tribunal yeah. and then the appeal tribunal, yeah, which it. will give... Uh, Governor Yabelo, the uh, the latitude to continue to govern the state for oh. the next um, uh, oh, okay then um, four years or those, just less those, than four years. Those of you who believe prayers will work wonder, wonders, please keep praying. At the same time, keep keep working. <laughs> Prayer alone will not be enough. Mm -hmm. Just before we pack it in, let's pay tribute to one of our own who passed away on Thursday in Akure Ondo State. His name. Ayo Ogedengbe, he was a veteran journalist with the Ondo State Radio Vision Corporation, OSRC. He was fondly referred to as the Grand Commander, the Okeagbe, a born journalist, died at the age of 66. Jide and Charles, let me also add, the Usen family became bereaved. Uh, my cousin, Dr. Uwa Usen, who taught at the University of the Year, was buried in my village this morning. Um, he died of complications, uh, you know, tied to COVID. COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, oh. our, our, accept our sympathies. Yeah. Set yeah. our condolences uh, for the loss of your loved one. And um, for Gerebe, I've heard so much about him, hmm. um, about his career and how he mentored people, mm. how people grew up out of him, you know, uh, like a tree. Um, and so he, you, you, only... you can say he lived a complete life. Yes, you, yeah. because you will be remembered by the people that you make. All right. That's why it pays for people to not be selfish. By the people that you make as a mm. leader, you will be remembered. So Gerebe has done his bit, it's made people, it's improved yeah. people. And definitely, it will not be forgotten. That's the way that our politicians should think. Okay, uh, Charles, Charles, uh, in the hall, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Uh, I and appreciate. Uh, send, send the bills to Gide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gide. Thank you. Okay. It's so far away. <laughs> it's, too, it's so far away. <laughs> so that, that's it on the program for the evening and the week. Join us um, on Monday for another edition. Of course, don't forget what we told you. Monday and Tuesday will be special editions. So don't forget to join us. And you may also watch the show on other platforms we are showing on the screen now and on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. The feedback channel remains the same. And so on behalf of all the backroom boys here, I'm Citizen Jones Usain. Bye-bye now. Take care.